Hi there, I'm Tom from Danfoss Climate Solutions. How do you save costs on system shutdown time and service if you have a solenoid valve failure in your system? Well, to answer that, have a look at this video. The videos troubleshoot the following Danfoss solenoid valve types. The EVR valve family, the EVU valve family, the CSV valve family and the coils used for these valves. Completing this series of online troubleshooting videos will efficiently support you to solve solenoid valve failures and thereby minimize system shutdown and service costs. This video gives you troubleshooting tips so you can efficiently identify root causes and make corrective actions related to valve coil failures. Check out the other online solenoid valve troubleshooting videos to get information about other valve failures and how to solve them. Here you see an overview of possible root causes related to the solenoid valve coil failures and how to solve these failures. Let us go through them step by step. If there seems to be no supply voltage to the coil or maybe incorrect supply voltage causing the coil not to operate the valve. Then the first step is to check if the coil is energized by any supply voltage. This can be done by using the Danfoss Magnetic Field Detecting Keyring, as seen here, or the Danfoss Magnetic Tool Lab, as seen here. The next step is then to compare the system supply voltage with the coil data. The coil electrical data can be identified from the coil ID marking, as seen here, Make sure that the supply voltage is within the specified voltage tolerances of the given coil type used, as specified here in this example of a coil installation guide. This installation guide is supplied with the coil. The final step is to check that the electrical wiring is according to the instructions in the coil installation guide, as seen in this example. As seen, the electrical wiring depends on the coil and connector type. If the wiring is OK, you should hear a clicking sound from the valve when energizing the coil, as seen here. Now, if the coil resistance is measured to be incorrect according to the coil data, then the first step is to check if the coil is energized by any supply voltage. This can be done by using the Danfoss Magnetic Field Detecting Keyring or the Danfoss Magnetic Tool Lab as mentioned earlier in this video. Next step is then to check if there is an indication of moist ingress into the coil which might have caused short circuit of the coil copper wires. Indication of moist ingress can be signs of corrosion in the coil o-ring groove area and on the coil metal bushings as seen here. This indicates that the coil o-ring was incorrectly mounted or missing or maybe there was dirt in the o-ring groove causing insufficient sealing. Another sign of moist ingress into the coil can be signs of corrosion or burning signs in the coil spades area as seen here. This indicates that the cable connector and or cable wire was incorrectly mounted or insufficiently tightened or maybe the connector gasket was missing or causing insufficient sealing. If the coil is damaged then replace it with a new one. Follow the instructions in the valve and coil installation guides which are supplied with the valve and coil as seen in these examples. Remember to mount a coil o-ring on the valve armature tube between the valve and the coil if needed by the coil type and if not already mounted on the valve. This is shown here in this example. Now if the coil gets very hot compared to normal coil temperature but is still functioning then the first step is to compare the system supply voltages with the coil data, as mentioned earlier in this video. Make sure that the supply voltage is within the specified voltage tolerances of the given coil type used, as also mentioned earlier. Now, if there seems to be too high system pressures and or temperatures so that the energized coil cannot operate the valve, then the next step is to compare the system pressures and temperatures with the valve and coil data. This to ensure that the energized coil can operate the valve without getting too hot. For this purpose, check out other Danfoss learnings about solenoid valve troubleshooting. 
The next step is then to check if the valve armature is freely moving inside the armature tube or may be blocked due to damaged armature and or armature spring, damaged armature tube or maybe dirt trapped between armature and armature tube. For this purpose, check out other Danfoss learnings about solenoid and valve troubleshooting and service. Finally, if the system data exceeds the coil data then, if possible, you should replace the coil with another coil type which can meet the system conditions. Check out other Danfoss online learnings about solenoid and valve coils for this purpose. Now, if the coil is burned or melted, as seen in these examples, then the first step is to compare the system supply voltage with the coil data, as mentioned earlier in this video. Make sure that the supply voltage is within the specified voltage tolerances of the given coil type used, as also mentioned earlier. Next step is then to check if there is an indication of moist ingress into the coil, which might have caused coil burnout. As mentioned earlier in this video, signs of such moist ingress can be corrosion in the coil o-ring groove area or in the coil spades area, in both cases caused by insufficient sealing. As also mentioned earlier, make sure to correct such failures. The next step is then to check if the valve armature is blocked, as mentioned earlier in this video. For this purpose, check out other Danfoss learnings about solenoid valve troubleshooting and service. The next step is then to ensure that the coil is not removed from the valve while the coil is energized as specified here. This is very important for AC voltage coils since the coil power consumption quickly increases dramatically if the coil is removed from the valve while energized. The result is a very hot and melting coil as seen in these examples. Finally, if the system data exceeds the coil data then, if possible, you should replace the coil with another coil type which can meet the system conditions. Check out other Danfoss online learnings about solenoid valve coils for this purpose. Now, if there are cracks in the coil, as seen in these examples, then the first step is to compare the system supply voltage with the coil data, as mentioned earlier in this video. Make sure that the supply voltage is within the specified voltage tolerances of the given coil type used, as also mentioned earlier. Next step is then to check if there is an indication of moist ingress into the coil which might have caused coil burnout and cracks. As mentioned earlier in this video, signs of such moist ingress can be corrosion in the coil o-ring groove area or in the coil spades area, in both cases caused by insufficient sealing. As also mentioned earlier, make sure to correct such failures. The next step is to ensure that the coil being used is compatible with the given environmental conditions such as sunlight, heat, moist, humidity, etc. It is also important that the coil is not exposed to harsh media like strong solvents, chemicals, etc. Such conditions can result in coil cracks over time. Finally, if the system data exceeds the coil data then if possible, you should replace the coil with another coil type which can meet the system conditions. Check out other Danfoss online learnings about solenoid valve coils for this purpose. So to summarize, from this solenoid valve troubleshooting video, you now know how to efficiently identify root causes and make corrective actions related to solenoid valve coil failures. This way minimizing system shutdown time and service costs. Please search for the other online solenoid valve troubleshooting videos to learn about relevant valve failure root causes and how to solve them with suitable corrective actions. Have a look at the other Danfoss online videos about solenoid valve troubleshooting and other videos where I talk about valves. Thanks for watching.